Space travel is now no longer a privilege reserved for only the most elite astronauts. But surely everyone wants to sit in the best vehicle. Among the spacecraft, SpaceX's Crew Dragon stands out as the best option, thanks to its genius design. Today, we're taking you behind the scenes for an exclusive look at the interior of our ride to the stars. For years, the image of a crewed spaceship was a cramped space filled with a maze of buttons and electronic devices. A true nightmare for anyone with claustrophobia. That remained until Crew Dragon came in and completely changed this image. Crew Dragon is the best image we have of a 21st century spacecraft, and one of its biggest advantages is its impressive spaciousness. For a long time since the space shuttle was retired, our astronauts have had to squeeze inside the three-seat Russian Soyuz capsules for missions to the International Space Station. I mean, those things work, but it is far from comfortable. On the contrary, Crew Dragon featured plenty of legroom. The ceiling was also pretty high, significantly reducing the risk of head bumps. Below the seats is the cargo pallet, where around 230 kilograms of items can be stowed. Normally, it carries a crew of four, However, the ship was built to carry up to seven people. Elon Musk said when it was first unveiled in 2014, quote, that is how a 21st century spaceship should land. There was an incident in early 2023 that caused NASA to add a fifth seat to the Dragon capsule. On December 14, 2022, the Russian Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft experienced a coolant leak while docked to the ISS RASVET module, which delayed the return to Earth of the astronauts on board. To guarantee the astronauts' safety while awaiting their mission, NASA's ISS mission management devised an emergency plan for the orbiting laboratory, one that could necessitate the evacuation of all crew members. As part of this plan, NASA astronaut Frank Rubio's seat liner from the Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft will be transferred to the Crew Dragon Endurance. Anyway, let's get back to the topic. Not only spacious, but Crew Dragon also optimizes its design so that passengers have the most comfortable experience. SpaceX describes its spacecraft, quote, Crew Dragon was designed to be an enjoyable ride. Four windows, passengers can take in views of Earth, the Moon, and the wider solar system right from their seats, which are made from the highest grade carbon fiber and Alcantara cloth. The Crew Dragon's environmental control and life support system will provide a comfortable and safe environment. During their trip, astronauts on board can set the spacecraft's interior temperature to between 65 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And of course, an indispensable part is the toilet. The SpaceX toilet is officially called the Crew Dragon Waste Removal System. It's located on the ceiling of the spacecraft. However, I don't think it will be used much. As former NASA astronaut and current SpaceX consultant Garrett Reisman has said, I can tell you from personal experience and data collected by NASA, it's kind of like going on a camping trip in the sense that for the first 24 hours, your body kind of shuts down a little bit as far as the digestive system goes. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of pooping on Dragon. Near the toilet location is the International Docking System Standard Port, IDSS. However, for private spaceflight missions not requiring ISS docking like the Polaris Dawn, the IDSS port can be replaced with a 1.2-meter dome plexiglass window offering panoramic views, similar to the ISS Cupola. Given these features, it's not an exaggeration to compare the ship to a cruise ship for space travel. However, what really makes Crew Dragon a spacecraft of the modern century is its touchscreen controls above the commander and pilot seats. NASA's early Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo capsules were heavily inspired by airplane cockpits. Their metal instrument panels were packed with switches, dials, lights, and analog gauges. The onboard computers were basic, operated via a mechanical keyboard. Just like piloting a plane, the commander controlled the ship using a control stick to adjust velocity, attitude, and direction. The Dragon's designers completely overhauled the setup, replacing everything, including the control stick, with three large touchscreens positioned in front of four side-by-side -side seats. 
Each screen can display up to 10 different sets of data, allowing the crew to focus on specific systems at a time. According to SpaceX, Crew Dragon's displays will provide real-time information on the state of the spacecraft's capabilities, anything from Dragon's position in space to possible destinations to the environment on board. Doug Hurley, the commander of SpaceX's first crewed mission, which launched in May 2020, said, you have an overall systems page on the screen, and then you can drill down into individual pages as well. There's a total of 25 to 30 individual pages, and SpaceX may have added some more since my flight. With any aircraft or spacecraft, you always iterate because it makes sense and it's easy and will help the crew. Not only modern and comfortable, Crew Dragon is also an extremely safe vehicle with multiple layers of redundancy. The capsule is an autonomous vehicle designed to assist astronauts to the point where they have virtually nothing to do, with the spacecraft operating entirely on its own. However, if something goes wrong, SpaceX ground controllers become the next line of defense, troubleshooting and issuing commands from the comfort of mission control. Only if the Dragon fails to manage the situation and the ground team can't resolve the issue will the astronauts take control. On the hardware side, the Crew Dragon features eight side-mounted Super Draco engines as part of its innovative emergency escape system, removing the need for a traditional, disposable escape tower. Additionally, unlike conventional spacecraft that store critical and costly systems, such as life support, thrusters, and propellant, in a separate, expendable service module, Crew Dragon integrates these essential components directly into the capsule itself, enabling reuse and enhancing efficiency. For launch aborts, the capsule relies on eight Super Draco engines arranged in four redundant pairs. Each engine generates 71 kilonewtons of thrust. Sixteen smaller Draco thrusters placed around the spacecraft control its attitude and perform orbital maneuvers. The trunk acts as an adapter between the capsule and the second stage of the Falcon 9 rocket, while also housing solar panels, a heat dissipation radiator, and fins for aerodynamic stability during emergency aborts. Unlike its predecessor, Dragon 1, which used deployable solar panels, Crew Dragon integrates solar arrays directly into the trunk structure for improved efficiency. The trunk also provides space for unpressurized cargo, like the rollout solar array delivered to the ISS. It is securely attached to the capsule via a fitting called the claw. The spacecraft's nose cone shields the docking port and four forward-facing thrusters during ascent and re-entry, and it opens for in-space operations. Dragon 2 stores propellant and helium pressurant for emergency aborts and orbital maneuvers in composite carbon overwrapped titanium spherical tanks located at the base of the capsule, in an area known as the service section. The outside of the ship is covered with a white coating called Z93C55. It was applied to the spacecraft to protect it from the rigors of space. Z93C55 is a two-part system made up of a pigment and a binder solution. Special additives are incorporated to boost electrical conductivity while preserving thermal control properties ensuring that the cured coating can withstand high temperatures and endure the intense stresses of launch. Upon re-entry, a PICA-3 heat shield protects the capsule during its descent through the atmosphere. Crew Dragon deploys six parachutes, two drogues, and four mains to slow down before splashdown, an upgrade from the five parachutes used by Dragon 1. SpaceX designed the Dragon spacecraft not just for NASA missions, but also as a commercial vehicle, with passenger safety and comfort as paramount priorities. I also wish to board the ship to experience the feeling of going into space. Well, to know what the experience on this ship is like, there is nothing more authentic than the stories told by the astronauts who have been on it. Bob Benkin, former NASA astronaut and one of the first passengers of Crew Dragon, shared his experience. We were surprised a little bit at how smooth things were off the pad. The space shuttle was a pretty rough ride heading into orbit with the solid rocket boosters. And our expectation was, as we continued with the flight into the second stage,
that things would basically get a lot smoother than the space shuttle did. But Dragon was huffing and puffing all the way into orbit, and we were definitely driving or riding a Dragon all the way up. It was not quite the same ride, the smooth ride, as the space shuttle was up to Mecco. A little bit less G's but a little bit more alive is probably the best way I would describe it. Andreas Mogensen, the first European Space Agency astronaut to serve as a pilot on a U.S. commercial crew spacecraft, was impressed by how smoothly Crew Dragon landed. Quote, what I noticed, in particular, was the smoothness of the landing compared to my first flight. The Dragon lands in the water, and I think that makes a big difference. Crew Dragon has dominated the U.S. crew space flight market since 2020. To date, it has successfully completed 15 missions and carried 56 passengers from various countries. It will also be the ship trusted to bring home two astronauts who have been stuck on the ISS since last year. These are the unfortunate astronauts who had to stay on the International Space Station when the ship that brought them there, Boeing Starliner, suffered a software issue. Speaking of Starliner, this ship was once a potential candidate to compete with Crew Dragon Thou. Boeing's CST-100 Starliner T is capable of carrying up to seven crew members or a combination of crew and cargo. It boasts a classic capsule design equipped with manual controls and touchscreens. The spacecraft is fitted with a service module that supplies propulsion and power, akin to Orion, though with more limited capabilities. The Starliner's life support systems are built to sustain crewed missions for up to seven months in low Earth orbit. It also incorporates advanced avionics and navigation systems, ensuring precise control and the ability to autonomously dock with the International Space Station and can be reused up to 10 times. The only downside is, it's not working properly yet. Right now, the only information we have on Starliner's progress came from a report by NASA's Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel, which states that the panel is satisfied with Boeing's advancements. Paul Hill, a member of the panel, mentioned in a public meeting that NASA Boeing teams have started addressing anomalies identified during the crew flight test. However, the key issue with Starliner's propulsion system, which remains the primary concern, has yet to be resolved, and teams are still working to determine its root cause. And there's the Orion spacecraft. Although NASA claims to have resolved its heat shield issues, the spacecraft's future remains uncertain, fueled by rumors that the agency's ambitious Space Launch System, SLS, may be canceled. As NASA works to prepare for the upcoming Artemis II mission, it remains unclear whether the Orion spacecraft will be launched atop the SLS, leaving its role in the mission still in question. So it seems like we'll stick to the Dragon for a while until a breakthrough occurs or until SpaceX completes its massive vehicle to Mars.